2000s, starting the new century and the new era. The Y2K problem, worldwide crisis, curtain network, sidekick phones, I am phone, web, and more, Britney Spears, and Hello. MySpace. Hey God, it's Jeffree Star. Internet is growing with the speed of the light, and in the same time, industry music in the US is surviving its best times yet. 40% of households already had computers. In the middle of 1990s, programmers came up with a method of shrinking the size of digital audio files without losing too much of their audio quality. They called it MPG-1 Audio Layer 3. MP3. Since late 90s and early zeros in the market you could see only big, clunky MP3 players made of classic 90s cheap grey plastic with complicated user interfaces holding very few of their owners' songs. CDs were making up over 80% of the US market revenue in 1999. Apple Computers Incorporated, which at that time occupied the computer market and had relatively low sales of its power books, power Macintoshes, iMacs and iBooks, decides to increase its consumer awareness by starting a new endeavor in one of the most popular industries back then. Music Steve Jobs expressed interest in developing a portable music player. Apple's senior vice president of hardware engineering, John Rubinstein, demurred say the necessary components were not yet available. While in 2001, Rubinstein first saw the tiny 1.8-inch hard disk drive on Macworld 2001 in Tokyo, and at the same time, Atoshi Body didn't really see a use for their invention. That became a critical component of the iPod. At a Tokyo hotel, later that evening, Rubinstein met with Japs, who was in Japan on separate business. I know how to do it now. All I need is a 10 million dollar check, he told Japs. At October 23, 2001, Apple released its very own iPod. With this MP3 player, I held it, and 45 seconds later, I knew how to use it. iPad is a nicely designed, well-integrated and pleasantly fast jukebox for Mac users. Sound quality is excellent. I tested it with included earbuds and with larger noise-canceling headphones. I even plugged it into an automobile speaker system using a cheap cassette adapter from Radio Shack. The iPod sounded great in each instance. It was built into a compact, sleek metallic body, which differs tremendously from others and was its killing feature. Originally, the iPad came with a pair of high-quality white earbuds that became an iconic accessory on the streets. It had a revolutionary new way of using your player with the new scrolling wheel. When engineers show Steve Jobs the very first iPad prototype for his approval, Jobs played with the device, scrutinized it, weighed it in his hands, and promptly rejected it. It was too big. 
The engineers explained that they had to reinvent inventing to create the iPod, and it's impossible to make it any smaller. Jobs was quiet. He stood, walked over to an aquarium, and dropped the iPod in a tank. After he touched the bottom, bubbles floated to the top. Those are air bubbles. That means there is space in there. Make it smaller. The device would have only worked with Macintosh computers with a new FireWire connector that was 30 times faster than USB and allowed you to put CD worth of songs onto your iPod in 10 seconds instead of 5 minutes with USB. Originally, it had a 5GB capacity drive, cost $399 and held 1000 songs in your pocket. Back then, it was revolutionary. The iPad was praised for its ability to liberate digital music collections from your computer. You just take this cool little device, you plug it in over FireWire to your Mac, it launches iTunes, takes all your music, all your playlists, and automatically transfers it down onto your iPod, and then you can unplug and just go. All the music was able to be downloaded to your iPod from iTunes, which was available for Mac only and was released eight and a half months before the iPod that year. In 2003, iTunes also became available for Windows. iTunes for Windows is probably the best Windows app ever written. But in those years, before iTunes even was launched, piracy was growing fast. Services like Napster were gaining users very quick. It originally launched on June 1st, 1999 as a pioneering peer-to-peer -peer file sharing software service with an emphasis on music distribution. It was founded by Sean Fanning and Sean Parker. When Parker was in second grade, his dad taught him how to program on an Atari 800 computer. He once hacked into a Fortune 500 company, but his dad confiscated his keyboard before he could look out. The FBI tracked him using his ISP, but he was only sentenced to community services. At the age of 14, Fanning met Parker over the internet. They initially bonded in over topics like hacking and physics, and then met in real life. In 1998, Sean wrote the code for what became one of the first popular peer-to-peer -peer file sharing platforms. He called it Napster. Peer-to-peer -peer meant that users could share music from computer to computer for free. Napster became a massive hit, especially among students at university campuses, allowing them to quickly download the music without paying a penny for it. But then happened something that turned the down of pirating into its eclipse. Metallica discovered a demo of their song I Disappear had been circulating across the network before it was released. It was played on several radio stations across the United States, which alerted Metallica that their entire back catalog was also available. On March 13, 2000, they filed a lawsuit against Napster. In March 2001, Napster settled both suits from Metallica and from Dr. Dre after being shut down in a separate lawsuit from several major record labels. In 2000, Madonna's single music was laid out onto the web and Napster prior to its commercial release, causing widespread media coverage. Legal troubles over copyright infringements aren't slowing down Napster. 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 Nail in, in Napster's coffin. On February 2001, Napster's number of users reached the point of 26.4 million worldwide. In 2000, AM Records, along with several other recorded companies, sued Napster. Napster lost the case, but then appealed. District Court commanded Napster to keep track and restrict access to infringing material. 
Napster was unable to comply and thus had to close down its service in July 2001. In 2002, Napster filed for bankruptcy and sold its assets to a third party. In October 2003, ad agency TBWH Shad Day introduced silhouette ads in Los Angeles, followed by a nationwide print and television launch. Susan Ellen Sengen, a Chadir art director, came up with the design of the iPad silhouette commercials in 2003, along with the help of James Vincent, a former DJ and musician. It was an extremely successful campaign that went down in history forever. But during the campaign was happening something else. In 2003, Casey Neistat and Ben Neistat made this video, which was viewed 6 million times in the first month of its release online, 3 years before YouTube launched. After the movie, Apple announced expanded warranties for new iPod owners to purchase for $59 and also introduced a new $99 battery replacement mail-in service for others. After the original iPod release, Apple opened the very first Apple store in Tyson's Corner Center, Virginia. Its sales were $150 million in the first year and it changed the industry of music and the way we listen it forever. Back when Steve Jobs introduced the iTunes, he told that We're gonna fight illegal downloading by competing with it. And he did it. In 2004, the president of the Recording Industry Association of America, Kerry Sherman, told The iPod and iTunes store are a shiny light at a very bleak time in the industry. In years, Apple expanded iPod lineup with new models, iPod Mini, iPod Shuffle, iPod Nano and iPod Touch. Their sales peak was in 2001. Back then, Apple sold 54.8 million of iPods. In interview with Wired, Walt Smith called the iPod the gadget of the century. It was the first personal device that made out of Apple Computer Incorporated, just Apple Incorporated, a change their direction, which launched a bomb that would kill the iPad. In 2007, Apple first launched the original iPhone. Even at the keynote, Apple introduced it as a device that combines an internet communicator, a mobile phone, and an iPod with a significantly bigger screen in one body. Be still now. In the next three years, Apple consistently updated existing lineup and at the same time introduced new iPhones. 2011 became the first year when no iPods were introduced. It was the year when Steve Jobs died. In the next years, Apple updated the iPod Touch of 5th generation, iPod Nano of 7th generation, and iPod Shuffle of 4th generation. 
Following years, iPad sales were stably declining along with no new introduced iPads for next two years, and stocks were raising. It was progression. But in 2015, Apple updated the lineup and at the same time finished the lifespan of iTunes along with iPod. Apple introduced the Apple Music. In 2019, Apple introduced the last iPod ever. It was an iPod Touch of 7th generation that was introduced silently, just dropped on the site without a presentation. In 2022, Apple discontinued the last iPod. First introduced in experience twice in 2001, making history for 21 years, and discontinued in 2022 iPod device that changed Apple, device that changed the industry, device that changed us forever.